In this video we are going to take a quick look at how to play the Light Campaign V3 in its very first release version. And as you can see here, your release build number will probably differ from mine. This is the version from uh, just a few hours before release, not the one you're playing right now. Anyway, so let's get started. First up, we select a new game and have to input company name and select our starting country. Depending on what country you choose, you will have access to different regions at the start. For instance, if you start in Gazmir, you will have access to Hetvesia as well. While if you start in Ahana, you will only have access to Dalua at the start. And well, it's a good mix between the other regions. So um, just keep that in mind, along with the labor costs that are listed up here. And uh, think of which kind of company you want to make. Let's say we are starting out in Fruinia and we are a bit of a sports car manufacturer. You can give yourself a permanent tech pool via these settings here in company tech. And you cannot fall below these values, but you can research beyond those values. You can then choose factory size you're starting with. This is the plot size. Then that is the factory size you are building on that plot. So um, for this one, I think medium and small is a decent choice. You don't want to go too big because the markets aren't too big and large factories don't uh, like to produce small amounts of cars. The starting cash and competition works um, as you would expect for the cash and then not necessarily as you would expect for the competition. This is how strong your competitors are. 70% strength means their desirability ratings are multiplied by 0.7. In this version the rating and the actual score doesn't really work just yet so just ignore that. This is the hub screen. You see your finance data here, you see how the global economy is doing over here in this graph. And then there are plenty of buttons down below. Uh, this is the market overview. This is where you build new cars. And this is where you do research. And this is where you um, manage your dealerships, which are also quite important. And this button will be grayed out for you. So the first thing we need to do is to build a new car. And this you do via this button. As you see, as a Frenian, we have access to Hetvesia at the start as well. So two markets to go into from the start. Uh, these guys, unfortunately, are not necessarily into sports cars, though that's bad for us. Once you have selected the regions, you are then uh, going into the project management itself. And this is where you design your cars and set up your engines. And this is done via the model and the trims. And first up, we need to edit our model. I think for a first car, we are going for something small and sporty. Something that also has rear engines and mid engines. Let's see. Yes, yes, indeed, it does. What a surprise. Unfortunately, the UI doesn't show you yet what kind of factory requirements the choices have. So, uh, well, either via knowing from before, uh, from the light campaign V2 or trial and error, um, I have to choose aluminium panels here because, uh, well, steel panels do require steel presses, which require a medium sized factory. There are some limitations on all these choices. Space frame, for instance, can't be mass produced, but we are making them uh, not highly automated in a small factory, which by itself doesn't have high automation levels, which means that it doesn't hurt us too badly. One thing to look out for is how much total engineering time you will accrue in each and every tab of the designer. As you can see here, this is nine months, this is 18 months, there's another 18 months there, and then six and six, that's a lot of time. And this is summed up and then compared to the other tabs and vector added as discussed in some of the previous little dev updates. It is, sounds a lot more complicated than it is, but um, make sure that none of the tabs are sticking out way too much. Now, there will be an overview of the engineering times later on in the designer. Now that we have defined our model for the car, we can now start designing a trim. And as you see here, we have a trim slot that just unlocked, but 
it requires us to make an engine first. So that's what we're going to do. Because we don't have an existing engine project, we're going to create a new one via this button. When playing the campaign, you need to always make sure that your engineering times aren't completely blowing up. And if you take a look at this, for instance, which also is available in the early years, well, just engineering dual overhead cam 4 valve takes you 55 months. And that is not really feasible. That would be a huge opportunity cost. So probably not the best idea. Start out easily with, uh, for instance, direct acting, push rod or overhead cam 2 valve and progress from there. Now we have designed our first engine and you can uh, give it a name and just in general make sure that you don't have any warnings showing. So no knocking, engine makes good power, has good reliability and so on. From here we can continue back out. Now we have our engine sitting in the engine slot for this trim and now we can start editing that trim itself. For this one we are going to choose the coupe and build the rest of the car as we would normally. And once you are satisfied with your design, well this one is scoring rather well, uh, then you have your first trim made which you can base your other trims on. On this final summary page before you leave make sure that none of these sections are overwhelmingly long in engineering time, this is this column. And please ignore the sum function here, that is still a little broken, that doesn't actually display how long it will take. You can now see the score for uh, this trim and you can choose which score it is showing by just clicking in that field and selecting a, uh, a certain demographic. And also know that some of these demographics actually only unlock a little bit later in the game, not from the start. So we're choosing the sports demographic, which it picked automatically. And now I'm going to make a somewhat more budget version of this as this one is all handmade. In order to do so, I just click this button to clone its contents. And then I have the whole design, the trim design, which I, I didn't design the car, but the whole trim design is copied over as well as the engine is transported over and put into the engine slot. We go into this car by just editing the variant. Please note though that in each section, you, if you choose different parts, you will have to stem both those parts engineering times added up for the most part. So what I'm deciding here right now is just to make a four-seater variant of this one with the same interior components so that I don't have to double engineer them. That should give me access to the GT categories, which do require four to five seats, unless you want to take a big penalty to your desirability in that category. Now we already have two trims and we are going to produce those in a small factory. So the smaller the factory, the fewer trims can be efficiently produced in it. Um, it's one model per factory, but uh, unlimited, uh, not effectively, unlimited amount of trims, but you need to place your cutoff, how many trims you want in the factory yourself. And for a small factory, I would go for two and a maximum of three, in a medium, three and a maximum of four, large, one extra again, and huge, one extra again. So we can try to produce free actually and make a convertible version of this. In order to do so, I just clone the original trim's contents and go in here, select a convertible body and it should be done. A little bit of more tuning. Ooh, oof, no, this is not looking good. Something, something is not going as planned. Whenever you select another body variant, the seat count is reset. So just make sure that you, you check that. And ah, back to green figures. Once you're happy with that car's tuning as well, we can continue by just exiting out via the arrow up button. And we see that, oh, that, that one is maybe not the one we want. Ah, that's not too bad. Um, you might wonder why my convertible gets a 5% body type penalty. That is because it is a soft top and not a hard top. 
Bodies that are not convertibles at all get 40% penalty, soft tops get 5% penalty, and hard tops get 0% penalty. An equivalent overview page like this one also exists for the engines. That we haven't looked at yet because the project has been automatically generated as we first created our first engine. Now let's take a look at this engine and see if we don't want to make another variant which we can also use in our project. In order to do so, you can select Edit Engine Project from the popping up buttons in the engine field. We are now in the equivalent overview for the engine. Looks very similar, it also has its platform, which is, or its family, which is the inline 4, cast iron, cast iron, OHC2, and no vivel. Yeah, no shit, no vivel. Let's say we want to make a somewhat toned down version of this engine, and we just clone its contents, and then call it something else. For instance, the B engine, the B version of this engine. And then we can edit it just as we would do usually. Once you're happy with your creation, you can just exit out the way you would do normally. And now you notice that we are in the top bar seeing where we are currently in the project. We are in the car project Fractal and we are just editing the um, SE46B or rather that is where we just came from. So if we exit out of this now, go back, we will return to the car project. Now we want to use that new engine we just created in one of these. For instance, a toned down version, a little bit quieter. How about we put that into the convertible? In order to do so, it's simple. We just delete out the engine from its slot. That doesn't delete the engine itself. And we put in an existing engine. Existing in the way that there is a blueprint for it. And then we have the selection. These are colored red to mark that they are actually not physically existing yet, just as a uh, blueprint. So we select that engine and now this engine is in the car. But the car needs to be recalculated, which is why the uh, red light is flashing over here. So let's edit the car and that should calculate it and everything should be fine from here. Now the light is green and we are happy with our overall project setup. This is the car we want to put into the factory. So now we go to the next step, which is production and factory management. And here, don't click the blinking button there, but rather take a look at what factories you already have. And in this case, we had a, a set up a small factory on the startup screen of the campaign. So we select this factory and then confirm that we want to choose it. Now the factory is selected as one of the factories to produce this trim and you can see, or oh, this model, and you can see that there is the Ultegra plus two, which means two more trims. And it's new and red needs to be set up. So let's edit and modify the factory. And there it is. There's our small factory. We don't have uh, any option for getting aluminum presses so we have to rely on a completely hand-built fashion to produce these, which is fine. We could indeed choose aluminium presses in case we went for a medium-sized factory, which uh, can harbor larger presses like steel presses and aluminium presses. These yellow flags, though, are just recommendations. They are not requirements. Anything that is red is a requirement and anything that is green is a fulfilled recommendation or requirement. In the factory changes, you see what you are coming from and what you are going into. So, for instance, if I'm removing a small factory and adding a medium factory, you see a small red factory in here and a medium green factory there. So, let's change back and they both disappear. And now, let's see, what does this cost us? For now, just 1.43 million. Well, that's not too much considering we have 700 of them. On this screen, you see that's the third tab in the factory screen, you see your three different uh, trims that are set to be produced in this factory. And you see how many cars you will be able to make per month. That is assuming an even split of production effort. The last number is a very important one. It shows you how much labor is required in 
uh, money to produce one of these trims. That of course depends on the number of production units. This factory is at an automation level of zero currently, which uh, very much is not recommended. And check out this number, also very important, for each production unit at this automation level. In order to produce one production unit, you have to invest and pay your staff $70.5. Now, if we up the automation level, and you see that the price, the cost per production unit is dropping. You want to keep that at a somewhat more reasonable price point. And oh, this is still quite a bit. 4,800, 5,000, still a lot. But considering that it's a very small factory, um, the costs for automating it as much as you can. A small factory cannot be automated all that much. So uh, automation slider of 85 in a small factory doesn't mean the same thing as uh, a huge factory's automation setting at 85, where you would pay through your nose in order to achieve that. Uh, here, it's not so much of an issue. 4.2 million, easily affordable. These other options are not properly implemented yet. You uh, mainly only gain the benefits from them, but don't suffer the consequences. For instance, tooling quality, well, now tooling quality actually is, is working, but you don't gain all the benefits of higher tooling quality, as you can see the production quality is shifted upwards for a higher tooling quality, while it's going down for lower tooling quality. And we can sure afford a few more, um, a bit higher quality for this one. Worker wages, no negative so far, but you don't want to go too low. Uh, let's let's put them at minus 10%. And quality assurance? What is quality assurance? Please note that callbacks will be a thing, and this is the monthly risk for a callback. Because we, at the start at least, have a pretty high production quality, it is rather unlikely that they are being called back. But if you want to limit that, you can add a higher QA threshold, which will slow down production, and you can see the cutoff of uh, this production, where or this quality of the production is the red line. Build quality on x-axis and the probability on y. So keep an eye on that for future versions of the light campaign. Once we have that implemented and callbacks are a thing, you will not be a happy camper if you um, do something like like this and then have the bad luck of getting a callback. Now that we have set up everything, we can just take another look at here. Then this tooling costs, yeah, five million. Okay, tooling time, just four months. That's a small factory. That's an advantage. It's fast to tool. And staff costs per month while producing these at the target two shifts will be 274k. All right, ready to sign off? Let's do it. Now you could add more factories that also are producing this, and you can split up the trims between them. That this factory, for instance, produces only two trims, and this one the other one, or whatever you want. But that I leave to you. Now we advance to engineering management, and this one, uh, I can see a problem arising already. We have an engineering time for this of almost 81 months. That is a long time and that means a lot of opportunity cost and uh, I'm not happy about that. So first up, how about we put a lot of pressure on our workers to get this first project done. It's not necessarily what you want to do, but currently there are at least no engineers that can get unhappy when you do that. Also, we have plenty of money to throw at this problem, so why not up the funding for this project? It's just costing us 11.6 million and when we up this we are already down to 62 months. But now we're paying 26 million. This is a sports car so reliability is probably not that much of a concern. And also it seems like we are on the high end of production units but uh, don't have that much material costs and that is what the process slider is about. So we can lower the production units and upping the material costs by lowering the slider. Probably don't want to do that too much. It also lowers engineering time. So basically this doesn't mean automated and manual. This is just a wrong labeling currently. We're going to fix that. It means 
This is more wasteful, but quicker and easier to engineer. And this is more frugal in the use of materials, uh, saves materials, makes the uh, production costs lower, but also adds a few production units to the production and makes engineering harder. The tooling is basically what the slider says. More manual labor down here ups the uh, production units immensely and up uh, and shortens engineering immensely as well. As you can see, there's just uh, 40 months for down from, what were we at? 80 something. And uh, up there, it is a ridiculous number. 80 back to 82, yes. So a full spectrum of ridiculousness. But at this setting, we basically use half the effort to produce this thing. For now, I'm going to leave this at something that gives me just below 50 months. And what do we want to put up? There, 49.9. Sounds good to me. Now let's advance and go to the, the same thing for the engine. Now this is where it gets slightly confusing. I've already pointed out that you, up here you see where you are on the project. This is the timeline for the car itself. But now we have to make sure that the engine is all done. It is being produced and engineered. So what we are doing here is to go from the car project into the engine project, complete the engine project and then go back into the car project. In order to um, set up the engine project correctly, we just press one of these buttons. These are part of the same family and you would have to do that for each family of a uh, new engine you're making. So let's do it for this one. So here we are on the project screen for the engine and we have already made the engines. So let's continue on to the project management. They don't have any factory selected. So let's select our factory, our engine factory and then set up the engine factory. You probably want to set it up in a rather similar manner to your car factory. And here indeed it is dirt cheap, only 14.6 uh, dollars per production unit. Very good. We sign off the factory and now head over to engineering. Next tab, as you can see here, this is green, ready to sign off. In engineering, oh, this is looking pretty good. This one only takes a base time of 50 months. That will allow us, if we want to spend a bit more money, to either take off pressure and let them learn a bit more in the project, or we could go for higher, higher tooling and more reliability. Let's do that for now. 49.8 months, sounds good to me. Now that is done and the engine project, uh, don't, don't look at this too much, this is just placeholders. Uh, for now, this will change in the coming updates. And the engine project is ready to be signed off. So click this button and the engine is marked as ready. Now you see that we can advance further in the engine project. That is because these are both ready to be signed off. You can't progress further than this screen until all engines are ready. This is the forecaster screen we are going to now. And what you can do here is see how well your trim is do how well your trims are doing in the market. This is projected out to um, your starting date of your sales. And this is looking pretty good for a first project. In with these buttons you select how many years it should take for the project to pay back. Uh, if you want to have an on average lower margin, lower base margin, then you can select a higher year number. The, the default is at five years. You can also lower the minimum shifts for your project and you can lower the target shifts. That makes it such that the uh, algorithm reacts slightly differently to uh, your cars and this is looking weird. Ignore that for now because this algorithm is not the one that's actually going to sell your cars. This is the old one not properly implemented yet. It might be in your version actually, but mine doesn't have that yet. So what are you actually looking at here? Well, you want to see green figures if possible. And you want to see that uh, at least some of your trims have a green indicator for a few years to come. These are the number of years in production. And uh, this is the competitiveness at that point in time with a pretty much straight line extrapolation of current markets. 
I want the base sales price of my models, so of my cars, to be a slightly lower than normal, so I set it to 7 years payback time. I'm probably going to facelift those cars anyway, so that should be fine. And yeah, there's still some bugs in here, so uh, as expected, please ignore those. Anyway, we are now on the final screen, and what you can see here, this one is actually already working. A sum total cost of just 110 million for factories and engineering. And you can see from the time here that I've already aligned uh, my engineering times for car and engine. Both take 50 months and then we have a tooling which takes 4 months each. Of course those go in peril. So overall this project seems to be set up pretty well. Now we can go out of here and save ready to sign off and go to the sign off screen. Alright, on this screen you can sign off multiple projects at the same time so that they are automatically aligned. If these numbers weren't the same then this screen would make it such that they are aligned in time and start their production on the same date. This works across more than just a car project. You could align three different car projects and five different engines to start at the same time. So if you are not ready to sign off yet, just exit the screen and you will find that this project is now with all its trims green. That means ready to be signed off. What we could do now is for instance make a new car project and actually, I've set up this, actually reuse the same engine. We could either use an engine that is already in existence, that we have already designed, or we could create a new variant of an existing engine project. So let's do that. And we can see that these two are ready to be produced. Let's make a clone of this one, change its name and then retune. Now I'm all done with this one, it's basically an economy version of this engine. And this is a naturally good fit for a, uh, for instance, city car. Note that if you are going down that route and are sharing engine projects, then of course the engine project will change and become quite a bit longer. In this case not so much because I only changed out one component basically, uh, Eco Cubs, which are very similar to the others, so not much engineering time change there. But if you then want to sign them off, um, one of these projects might have to be shifted. So you need to retune those. For now, we're not going down that route. And I'm just going to remove the secondary car. When you're finally ready with all your projects and ready to align them and sign them off, here we go. You just tick them, um, check that your alignment is correct and sign them off. Agree and then we are back here. Now this one is in engineering which is marked by yellow. And you have an entry in your calendar in the main hub which you're getting back to automatically. So now we see 50 months this project takes, all right, takes you to 1950. These are your three trims and now we can just advance time. You do that up here in the corner. While time is running, you can see how the economy is doing. Oh, that's a recession. And how much cash you are spending for engineering, among other things, and tooling, of course. Tooling is not currently active, as we did see it only takes the last four months of the project to tool. And uh, before we hit that mark, I probably have to change something else as well. So here we are in uh, 449 and the release of our car is coming up. And we might not have the reach we actually want. For that, head over to marketing and dealerships and check out what is going on there. So for Enia, we are our starting region has a dealership network level of uh, 2. To increase the dealership network level, which has so many beautiful stats displayed here, which totally tell you everything you need to know, well, that will come in a later version, what this basically does is up your base awareness and allow you for a further rise in um, awareness than a lower dealership level would allow you. So. We do want to sell this car mainly in Foronia, a little bit in Hetvesia as well. So we do have plenty of cash. Let's up the, this is instantaneous. Let's up this by two levels to level four. And here we have level zero, which means you can sell zero cars in there. So we at least want to have a decent shop in the capital. Now let's put in uh, two levels there. 
You can see a big spike in cost that is for the dealerships. And now if we check out the world markets, let's select the uh, regions that actually matter to us and check the uh, awareness, you see that we are on an average of 9%. Well, that is not much, it is enough to get started. On top of that, you can also start doing some marketing about a year in advance. So why not invest a bit into sportiness? This is targeting anyone who, any demographic that has at least a partial contribution to its score by sportiness. So if uh, the demographic favors sportiness by 15%, so if a demographic has a makeup of 15% sportiness, then your marketing will have 15, uh, for sportiness, will have 15% effect on them. And here you can see the total costs you're sinking per month. And let's see, so sportiness and drivability, that seems like a good combination for us. Do we want to spend, spend 100,000 per month in the lead up for our sales? Yeah, well, maybe a little less. Now you can see the tooling has come in. That is much higher costs per month. And here we go, we are selling our first cars. One more month tick. And there we have it. We have uh, monthly sales numbers of seven. This is the first production, first month production. And it looks like we have sold absolutely everything. And that bodes well for our little company. So 78 cars sold there, 74 and 77 of this one. And they still have pretty good competitiveness, even after all that waiting for the trims to come out. The sales algorithm will automatically adjust your margins such that you get as much profit out of them as possible. While not super realistic, that uh, saves you loads of micromanagement, but also I need to point out that there will be a manual option for this one so that you can play properly your um, fictive car company, which doesn't every month change its uh, pricing for the cars. And there we are in 1952. Overall, we have made some good profits. As you can see, the margins have gone up uh, rather significantly. And it looks like this is such a success that we definitely need to consider making a facelift. Let me show you that real quick. So we go in here, select the trim, any trim, double click on that one for instance. And we are here in this project overview once again. But everything there is locked down because these are already in production. So what you do now is to add a new facelift. And don't wait with that for too long because the design of this thing is from 1946 and we are already in 1952. A facelift will be a lot quicker than the original engineering. So make good use of that. We add a facelift. It's the Mark II in 1952. And we select to facelift all our trims. You can also see that, ah, well, this wasn't too successful, so I don't want to facelift this one. That is entirely possible. Once you've renamed them, you don't want to sell clones, do you? You can then, uh, and you, you have set up, then put in some new tech here. Look at that. We will have super powerful brakes. Oh, the, uh, they're actually too powerful. So you put in new tech, and once you have them all set up, you can then go and set up production management just as you have done before. If you don't change much, obviously, the um, tooling costs or the retooling costs will be minimal. One million? Yeah, acceptable. And now for the engineering and uh, you see uh, that the uh, settings of the previous project or well, the, the previous facelift have been taken over and this leads to a development time of just one year. That is great. This should allow us to optimize the tooling quite a bit, which should lower our production units and thus up our output in general. This is still a little bit bugged in favor of you because um, this tooling slider now modifies only this base time instead of the original base time and building the difference out of it. So uh, yeah. Use it while you can. This will go up a lot quicker in uh, future versions of the game. So is it considered cheating? Yeah, kind of. 
18 months seems like a, a good time for such large improvements. And one thing I forgot to mention is that I didn't choose to update the engines. You can do so here. On this screen, where you have the engines, you can do the following. Uh, you can do edit the engine project. We can then add a facelift. This is now in the engine project, as you can see there. So we add a facelift. We choose to update both engines, or just one of them. And we did get a few more revs out of this one. So what do you do now? Well, you've got to throw these out and the new ones in. So uh, clear the engine slot. And now we put in the ex an existing engine because we went into the engine project before and created a new variant. So we can choose our new one. And for the last one, our B version, right. Uh, now we need to update our trim again. Get all the big score updates for the improve all improved engine. You should probably retune uh, the, the car as well. And once we are done, we need to make sure that the engines, the new facelift of the engine has its engineering information and production information. Let's select the old factory they were being produced in and sign it off. Same old settings as before. And now the engineering project, just a little refresh of the engine, takes a good nine months. Let's uh, use that time to make them slightly more reliable. And we can save some money, because our other project is taking 18 months. So why not save some cash? And maybe learn a bit. Once you have set it up, it's re market ready to be signed off. And we should be ready to sign off this facelift. And these are big green numbers. We like big green numbers. On the final screen, once again, you can see that the retooling will take four months in the factory. And let's get ready to sign off. The engine project needs to be, it only takes 16 months, so it's going to be shifted two months forward in time uh, so that they start with the engineering two months later. That means they will finish on the same time. And once we sign them off, we have our new facelift ready to be engineered. It will appear on the calendar and while they are just engineering and not actually tooling, that means that the old production will continue. We are still making a decent amount of cash and now we are selling off stock. This is the number of months worth of stock you have saved up of this car. Currently there is no specific way to actually save up stock, but that will be a function in future on the calendar that you set stock savings targets. And there we start our new production of the new facelift. Unfortunately it starts currently at a pretty bad value for, at least in my version, it might already be fixed in yours, but uh, this always takes a little bit before it has stabilized once again. And once it does, we should be making some good profit. And if you want to reinvest these profits into future viability, you should maybe visit the research and technology uh, part of this one, where you can research ahead. And every point in here is worth one year of earlier unlocks. This, of course, is not coming for free, unlike these base levels we set on the campaign startup screen and will cost you a little bit as you see here per step about well for the first step 250k then another 250k and then it just goes ballistic from there researching ahead takes time though and the when you set it to plus four for instance then it will take several years for it to get there your current level of uh, technology you see in the current level figure. And if it is one, then that means you are one year ahead. Ahead of what, you ask? Well, it is the base unlock level where everyone gets it. Your version will have the option of actually pausing production. I can't do that just yet. And that is when you want to just abandon a, uh, a, a car project entirely and if you want to um, just make a new model and then discontinue the old one you can simply do so by reusing the old models factories if you do that then automatically 
this production will be stopped when it is time to hand over that factory. That is simple to do by just selecting it from the list of existing factories when you set up your new car project. One more thing to note is that over time regions will unlock for you and that is a massive opportunity. As soon as Gazmia unlocks from Forenia, that is a big market you want to conquer. On the other hand, if you are in Gazmir and Ahana unlocks, then that might be an excellent opportunity for outsourcing labor. I think at this point I have armed you with the basic concepts and you should try and explore yourself further. I will be making a little let's play myself just to uh, check on balance and uh, game mechanics that are broken and such. I hope you found this useful and see you guys next time.